Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be making an art journal. So, this is just a little idea that's been floating around in my head, um, at least this morning, because things don't last very long in my head. Um, I took apart this spiral bound notebook and I had intended to paint the cover of it because I love painting. It just didn't, it didn't work out. First of all, it didn't look right. I didn't like the way it looked. And second of all, um, it warped. So the front and the back, I just ended up throwing away. But then I had this whole thing of paper here. And I love art journaling. And I know that a lot of, a lot of other people are getting into art journaling too. So I think I've pretty much given you guys um, enough videos on doing a composition book. So I thought, why not play around with a spiral notebook? So I'm not sure if I want to remove half of these pages. I don't think I want to, because even though the spiral bound notebook is gonna kind of gap a little bit over here because we're gonna be you know, layering a whole bunch of stuff, it still has the ability to because it's on the wire. So I think all we're gonna do for the inside is glue some pages together, which I know I got a mean, nasty comment on gluing pages together because that's a waste of paper, but quite frankly, I don't care. This is my project. So um, we're gonna glue pages together. If that's gonna bother you, please uh, move on to the next video so you don't have to see me. All right, for all of those who want to stay for pages glued together, welcome. Um, I'm just going to use a glue all Elmer's. Hold on one second. Okay, would you look at that? It's not even glue all. It's just Elmer's school glue. So I bought a huge thing of this on Amazon, and I've used it for a million and one different things. So let's start out by just gluing some pages together. This is going to be my front and back. Um, Love reusing cereal boxes for all sorts of things, journals. This is going to be a junk journal, or this is going to be an um, art journal. So definitely save your cereal bo boxes, your pasta boxes, um, anything that has a box on it. You can use it to glue together and make medium weight chipboard so you don't have to buy it because we're not all made of money. And the gas is outrageous, so everything else is going up in price. So we don't need to buy extra art supplies. We're going to use what we have. I'm just going to take this school glue here. I guess I should lay out um, something to put these papers on. And I am literally just going to start gluing some of these together. I'm wondering if I should keep them all together. Oh, decisions, decisions. I don't want to keep them all together because I'm afraid they're going to rip, but if I'm gluing them, then they're doubled up. Okay, I'm going to keep them together. What I had originally planned to do was take a sheet of paper, glue it, and then put another sheet on top, but I'm afraid I'm going to miss the, mess up the holes here. So we're going to take these handy-dandy little clamps from the Dollar Tree, and we're going to clamp them. Pardon my head. We're gonna clamp these edges together so they don't move. And that way we can just um, glue our pages together. You might also wanna have some wax paper on hand or parchment paper to, um, and you don't have to take your book apart. I didn't mention that. So you don't have to take your book apart. If you wanna keep your book together, go for it. I'm just, taking the book apart because I'm trying to make a thicker cover. That's basically what I'm trying to do, that I can like do a mixed media print on. So you don't have to take your um, spiral bound notebook apart. You can always just add to the cover of it. If you wanted to make a really thick cover like I'm trying to make, you can just glue a piece of box onto the cover of this. All right, well, enough talking. Let me, let me assault your ears. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Let me go ahead and start gluing and I'm just gonna use sheets of wax paper in between and see how far we get. 
All right, I'm going to put it in fast forward, though, because you don't want to listen to me and watch me in real speed do this. This is boring. Okay, so here's another option. I have these little tiny fine line bottles and I have glue in this one, school glue, so I can go around the edges and then just do a rough, like, streaky with this. I forgot to tell you that I'm gluing three pages together. So when you put the glue down and you do three pages, at first it's gonna come out really wrinkly like you can see here, but all of that glue it eventually hardens and it makes a really nice sturdy page so that's why i chose to go with three and that's why i chose to use this glue because it might look like i'm using an excessive amount but i'm actually reinforcing the papers with that glue i hope that makes sense and anybody that knows me and watches my crafting um, videos you know I have no chill in me at all and so I have the hair dryer literally attached to my desk because I can never wait for anything to dry no patience okay so we are done gluing all the pages together Hannah is having a giggle fit down there because she's playing with the dog so we glued all the pages together. They're drying now. Some of them are going to stick together. I really don't care because, like I said, I'm going to prep these pages usually before I use them anyway, either with paint. What the heck is going on down there? All right, so we're putting this aside. She's losing it. So what you're going to want to do is start out by measuring your paper. This is just... A regular spiral bound notebook I got at Dollar General I think so I'm not sure what size it is but the paper ended up being ten and a half by eight and so I wanted to give just a little bit on the height so I only gave 0.25 oh I did only give 0.25 on the width too okay so I added you know a quarter of an inch to each measurement to allow for the cover to give a little bit of a hangover So after measuring, I immediately grabbed my box cutter and like cut off the tip of my finger. Ridiculous. I was not paying attention at all. And I had my hand down on the ruler and I was going at an angle and just cut the tip of my finger. So note to self and to all of you, please, please, please be careful with these box cutters. Any kind of X-Acto knife box cutter, they are are sharp and literally i just got over the same exact cut on this same exact finger because that's where i hit myself every time so just be really really careful if you feel more comfortable using scissors please do that just draw the line measure it out and cut with scissors i just so happen to not even have scissors at my desk right this second and the box cutter was right there and i'm usually okay with it i was just careless today so please be careful. I didn't have enough room on one box to do two full cutouts to glue together. So I did the one full piece that you see right there on the right hand side. And now all I'm doing is cutting off pieces of the leftover to literally just piece together and make it a double thickness weight. It's like a medium chipboard. I'm choosing to use tape on this just because it is the cover and I am going to be adding wet glue to it when I collage the front. So I don't want more wet glue because I want less warping. I really want these covers to hold because I'd like it to last the length of the book. And, you know, I've got quite a few pages in there, so I really needed a, a sturdy cover.
I kept looking at it and I knew something was off and one of the edges sure enough was like a quarter of an inch off. So here I have to remeasure and recut just because it wasn't a quarter of an inch. It was like an eighth of an inch, but still it didn't look right. So I went back and recut it. And instead of tearing this box apart right here, I just went ahead and traced it and kept the natural fold there. And it actually worked out really good. I should have done that in the first place. So if you're watching this video, feel free to do it the way that I'm doing it in the first place because it really was simple. Now you guys might not see this step right here as necessary, but I did only because I did piece together the tops there and I see where the bend marks are. So in order to kind of hide that from me, I went ahead and did this layer of, this is just shipping paper. I got it for free from a U-Haul place um, or somebody had bought it, but I got it free from them. And these sheets are perfect for junk journaling and art journaling because they're huge. They're a really light texture and um, they're like a really thick tissue paper. So I just really like um, covering the pieces of chipboard that I, do, that I use um, just because I feel like it gives it a smoother texture. And I'm going to quit saying um, now. I'm just giving it a rough cut and the glue is still wet, so that's why you see it pulling, but that doesn't bother me. If it does bother you, please wait for the glue to completely dry and then use a very sharp pair of scissors or utility blade or X-Acto knife. But the main thing is you have to wait for it to dry, otherwise it's gonna pull like it did here and I'm just not patient, so that's why it did it to me. But it didn't bother me. It kind of looks nice with the uh, collage that I did on it, it kind of looks like it belongs like that. And you can see how I'm using the tape, or the tape, that's what I'm saying, the paper and the glue like a tape to hide that cut there where I just piece the two pieces of cardboard together. Boy, these words are not coming out easily today. Okay, now it's time to put this beast back together again. So I will admit that this was much harder than it should have been because if you just take apart a spiral notebook and you redo um, the holes like this, when you line it up with the paper and you redo the holes and I have a little one eighth inch hole puncher, so it's perfect. Now, if you line it up and you do it like that, it's fine. And you can just twist the spiral part, the metal back. You can just twist it and it just falls in every hole properly. You will see me struggle because I literally made this paper like three times thicker when I glued them together than it was supposed to be. So you can see with the clamps, it's like frayed up. 
So even though the lines are mat or the holes are lined up, it's still a different thickness than the coil. I don't even know how to explain that to you. If you look on a three ring binder, you'll see the coils very thick and that's how it was easily wound into there. But if you see a small notebook like this, the coil's really thin. I had to help it guide into each hole because the paper's thicker, I used glue, all the above. So it was a little bit harder to do, but I still love the way that it turned out and I would do it again. I'm sorry, when I started threading this through, I was completely out of camera shot. So I'm doing the best I can to show you. I'll slow it down a little bit um, to show you exactly how I had to guide it in. But basically you just have to keep twisting and guiding that last one through each loop. And here it is slowed down a bit with my big fat head in the way. So if I could keep my head out of the way, you'd probably be able to see a little bit better. But I don't have my glasses on, so I kept having to lean in to look at the little tiny holes. I hope it's obvious what I'm doing, though. So I decided not to put a ton of music in this today and tell me whether you guys like that. I don't always want to blare the same music, um, but I'm having a really hard time finding music that I like that I want to purchase. So today's video, I just decided to kind of talk you through it. It really was a tutorial anyway, um, but I want, tried a little bit to stay away from the music. So just let me know if you guys prefer less music in my videos where I talk you through the process or just leave blank, um, you know, pieces of video with no audio behind it, or if you want me to keep up with the music. I went and grabbed a couple pieces of paper from my scrap bin, and then I hit up my stickers and some cutouts, and I just decided to throw together a collage on the front of this. I like the way it turned out. It's very simple, it's very easy. It's literally just tearing sheets of paper and putting them together. So I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. I can't wait to start using this art journal. I'm actually gonna make another video probably tomorrow doing my first spread in this art journal. I still have my other art journals and I will be using them, but I just don't like using the same thing over and over again. And I know that you probably have seen my plan with me. I have 8 million different planners and bullet journals and journals and I just really like to work in different books. I think it keeps things new and fresh and I get sick of the same old, same old. So if you did like the video, make sure you give me a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe to my channel because like I said, I plan on making another video very soon using this art journal because I'm super inspired now to start art journaling more because I love this book. All right, I will see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.